All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, my name is Dr. Sammy Meese. I am a chiropractor practicing in Georgetown, Texas. I am pleased to chair TCA's Next Gen DC's committee. One of the committee's goal to prepare chiropractic students for their future careers, as well as helping chiropractors in their first few years in practice. That's why we launched our Next Gen DC's webinars series. I, I am so excited about today's webinar, Save Money, Time, and Reduce Stress, how to build a team of A players with Dr. Ellen Miner of Cairo Matchmakers. After the next hour, I am confident our new DCs will get valuable information to help them elevate the quality of their team. The students joining us today will discover how to interview better and land their first job. Before I introduce Dr. Miner, I have a few short announcements. Next week, we are hosting our Next Gen DC Social from 7 to 9 p.m. Wednesday, April 4th at Whiskey Cake Kitchen and Bar in Irving. New DCs from the DFW area are invited to attend along with students from Parker University. Just a few weeks later from that date, we'll have another Next Gen DC Social on Thursday, April 20th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. at Fleming's Prime Steakhouse and Wine Bar in the Domain in Austin. Registration is now open for both socials. Hope to see you guys there. I want to give a big thank you and a big applause to our sponsors, Cairo Secure, Anderson Injury Lawyers, and Longhorn Imaging. Next Gen DCs will host its second webinar of 2023 on Friday, May 12th at noon. The topic is the art of branding, a guide for the chiropractic doctor and student. And the featured speaker is Dr. Jesse Jacobs. Stay tuned for more, more details. Finally, I want you guys to save the date for Cairo Texpo 23. You do not want to miss it. TCA's annual convention on June 23rd through the 25th at the Renaissance Dallas Addison. Registration opens up next week. Please go register and we will see you there. Just a few highlights of Cairo Texpo. Dr. Jerome Adams, former U.S. Surgeon General, headlines a powerful speaker lineup. Other highlights include our Adjust Lab featuring hands-on workshops, a Women's Cairo Day, your Medicare hours that you need for the, for the first DCs, and then Next Gen Activities and Career Fair, chiropractic assistant and staff training, and much more. So look out for details and sign up for your uh, convention. Make Cairo Tech Expo 23 the one event you do want to go and complete your CE hours and spend quality, quality time with your fellow DCs. Now, it's time to introduce you to our speaker, Dr. Alan Miner. Dr. Miner graduated from Parker University in 2003. Today, he owns seven clinics in New Mexico and Texas. Currently, he is the CEO of Cairo Matchmakers, chiropractic's largest staffing and placement agency for chiropractic assistants and associate DCs. Dr. Miner lives in McKinney with his wife, Wendy, and their three children. Let me add that Dr. Miner's company, Cairo Matchmaker, is a TCA bronze partner and TCA appreciates your incredible support. A reminder, during the webinar, you can go to the Q&A box and they will be answered right after Dr. Miner fin finishes his presentation. You can also visit this recording as it will be uh, uploaded and you will be able to uh, watch it later if you miss certain things. With that said, please help me welcome Dr. Miner. Dr. Miner, it is all yours, sir. Thank you, Dr. Sammy, appreciate it. Absolutely. And uh, thank you for everybody watching now and, and in the future. Uh, as, as Dr. Sammy said, I have a unique position of um, operating several chiropractic clinics in New Mexico and in Texas. And, but my full-time job really is, is as a CEO of Chiro Matchmakers. So all day long, we're talking with owners of clinics. We're talking with um, students. We're talking with associate doctor chiropractors and CAs. And so we, I really get to see a different perspective of, of how employees and, and A players intermingle throughout our profession. And so I'm gonna share some insights with you today whether you're looking, what we use the term talent, whether you're talent, an associate doctor, or whether you own a clinic, um, I think it's really important we all get on the same page here. And I think some understanding of what, or the owners of what um, associates are looking for in their jobs and some understanding for associates for 
for what owners are looking for really helps to smooth this out. I always cringe it. I'm just tired of hearing this, this old adage of chiropractic eats their young. I'm telling you that, that that might still be true in a percentage of the population of chiropractors, but for most of the profession, that's not the case. What we've seen happen is the maybe like the general economy, there's a big bifurcation in practices right now. And there's some incredibly successful, profitable uh, chiropractic practices around the country, a lot of them that really provide some great homes and, and great work and great salaries and great environments for associate doctors. And, um, you know, what people are realizing, like any business, is you have to take great care of the people. There needs to be a win-win. So, you know, the people on the team need to take great care of the business so the owner's profitable to keep hiring and employing and serving the community. And the owner has to take great care of their people so that they have a great livelihood and you know, they're, they're getting to do what they went to school for. So let's dive into this just a little bit here. And uh, there we go. So first thing to touch on today is the word commitment. And it's the act of binding yourself intellectually or emotionally to a course of action. I simply bring that up because the title of this is Commitment to A Players. And, uh, you know, we've all probably at one point in our life either had a job or currently are in a job or had somebody that worked for us that was not committed and it's that binding of yourself. There is, you know, an exchange that happens between two people. A lot of times we use the analogy of, of dating versus marrying someone. And, you know, as a clinic owner, it's a huge commitment to an employee. I mean, most clinic owners are really hoping that that, it, that someone works for them for five, 10 years, you know, for, for a career. And of course, if you're looking for a job, if you're willing to make that commitment to somebody, you know, there's got to be a fair exchange. There has to be expectations and agreements on both sides of the fence that that have to be met. Um, and again, I love this principle from chiropractic: above, down, inside, out. How does that employ to? How does that apply to employees? Um, very much so. I mean, a lot of this leadership and commitment comes from the top down. Um, you know, obviously, a lot of you probably have your own horror stories that that are out there of maybe associateships you've had. Um, who'd that come from? That came from the owner, from above, down, and inside out. And the inside out, though, is where, you know, that's the healing in chiropractic is from the inside out, right? Stimulating that central nervous system to repair and heal and regulate and adapt to the environment. Well, that inside out, in this case, is the team that's that's there. And they really, you as a team member, help drive the culture of that practice and I think you can very quickly appreciate why there, there's such an intimate relationship that, that oftentimes gets overlooked. A little bit about my backstory. Um, we operate seven. We're about to open our seventh clinic in Grapevine right now. And um, But we've had a couple clinics fail. And I really didn't particularly care to ever be in the staffing business. But I had two clinics fail for various reasons. Um, and it was expensive. And it was ugly. And it was a time suck. And I, I, my one piece of advice, if there's any doctors on the line who are considering opening a second clinic, always my first word of advice before you do that is you need to be able to leave your current clinic for three months and come back and everything should be running and either at least stayed the same, if not grown while you were gone. And I know that maybe sounds good, but really I'm not joking. You need to leave for three months because what that will show you is first of all, most of you can't do that. So if you're not able to step out of your business, there's not enough systems and procedures and the right people aren't in place for you to scale this into another office. And what happened to me and what happens frequently is you don't have your systems in your current office in place. So the owner is the personality and the engine that's driving that business and keeping everybody together. And when you remove yourself to go help launch this other clinic, the first clinic can oftentimes fall apart. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, you're left with with two less than clinics instead of a new one that's adding and multiplying the first clinic. And that's what happened to me. I had a couple of clinics and I didn't have the systems and the people and the procedures in place and eventually had to shut them down, which is wildly expensive. Lost, we sent a lot of patients to those offices, lost them. It was such expensive tuition to get this wrong. And so I got really interested in looking at what makes great teams great. And these A players, this concept, and a lot of this is measurable. And uh, if you know things going in, you really can predict the outcome of these 
of your clinic and the staff you have there months and years before you ever have any issues or challenges. So I started doing that for my, myself. And then I started having other friends who are CEOs of other businesses ask me to help them. And it turned into a consulting company called Ideal Team. And so we, we didn't do any staffing. We'd just go look at the, the chemistry and the makeup of the different people on a staff. And this was outside of chiropractic. I had a lot of patients who ran a lot of different companies who I'd talk to. And then I started having chiropractic friends start asking, hey, can you help me? You know, we keep having a revolving door in our front desk CA or something's wrong with my associate program. Nobody's sticking around or they're not happy. So we started helping out chiropractors. And I think it was about the 52nd person <laughs> that asked me, uh, can you help me find a person? I said, no, we don't do that. We finally decided we probably need to figure out how to find some people. And so that's what we do. And again, it's why we I get such insight into, you know, what makes for a great job on both sides. So a couple high level pointers. Um, this sounds simple. You know, our mission statement at Chiro Matchmakers is we build dream teams. We build chiropractic dream teams. And if you ask anybody top to bottom on our team, hey, what do we do here? We build dream teams. And um, we say it every day. And that sounds simple, but there's something about a catalyzing statement for your clinic, for your business that really sets the tone for the culture. And, and if you go around and ask your team, hey, what's our mission statement today? And nobody can answer it. That's the first place to start. You know, you can't build a team of A players if nobody knows where they're going. And there's something to be said about culture. You know, I've heard these analogies of, you know, I need you to get over to Albuquerque from Dallas. How are you doing it? It's a lot easier when you have a map and a roadmap and you know where you're going. And that's what your mission statement does. It instantly sets a tone for anyone you're interviewing with, uh, for people to get a sense of, is this place a good fit for me or not? Um, really knowing that mission statement is important. And also something else I'll say about A players is um, consider this. Most A players are currently employed. And so this is a generalization. Things happen in our lives. I understand that. But generally speaking, if somebody's not employed, they're oftentimes not the A players. They're the C players. And so now you have to ask yourself if you're an owner or think about this, too, if, if you're an associate. If you're an owner, you know, how do I attract A players? Well, the first thing is you have to have a vision because A players aren't going to pull up alongside somebody who doesn't have a vision, who doesn't have clear systems, procedures. I mean, if you're working for somebody, you want to work for somebody successful who's going somewhere. And, you know, this comes back to you owners, your mission statement. Are you using it? And does your team know your long-term vision? And how precisely can they repeat that back to you? And you'll find if your vision's big enough and you're executing on that, you'll start to have people come to you. And, and somebody will, might be in a job and they'll under, and they'll see what you're doing and they will want to leave that to come join what you want to do. A players work that way. And so, you know, I, we hear a lot of complaints. Wow, it's hard to find chiropractors today. And by the way, our stats internally show us right now that there's about five jobs for every one associate doctor available. So owners, you better get your act together right now because there's a lot of competition and associate docs this is to your advantage because there's a lot of competition. You have choices like never before. And so if you're an A player and you bring value to that business, there's you, you can get paid for that. And people will pay a premium for your services, especially these successful clinics. They know how valuable that you know an associate doctor is. We generally teach an associate doctor should bring in a five to one return on their salary. So if an associate doc's making $100,000, $125,000, they should generate a half million dollars in business. So I say that because I want both sides of this, owners and talent, to think about that. And sometimes owners now, you know, it's very common we're seeing six-figure salaries in chiropractic. When we started this, the average salary was only fifty or $60,000. But when we do the math for an owner, and you, if you're averaging $50 in adjustment, which, by the way, is on the low end, with inflation today, there's never been an easier time, owners, for you to bump up your rates to 55, 60, 65. We're all the way up to $95 a visit in our clinics. And um, people are used to everything being more expensive right now. It's a really easy time to raise your rates. But let's say that you, you know, see 50 people a week. If you can get this associate doc to seeing about 30 people a week, 
somewhere between 30 and 40, you're going to break even on the salary. And our objective is if you can get an associate doc who's serving about 200 people a week at $50 average, that's $500,000, $600,000 on. So what's fair to pay an associate? You know, now $125,000, $150,000 doesn't look so crazy, does it? But nobody's going to come join you if you don't have a big vision and your team's not aware of that. So I like talking economics because a lot of people don't talk about those in chiropractic. And, um, you know, again, we talk to docs all day long and some of them go, yeah, I get it. Best investment I'd ever make, you know, buys my time freedom back. I can serve more people in my community. I can spend more time with my kids. And something that's surprising a lot of times to owners is we have found from our, our behavioral metrics that about 70% of chiropractors are hardwired as what we call caregivers. High patients, high systems, great clinicians. They're doctors and never wanted to own a business. We've got this funny bubble in chiropractic where most chiropractors really don't want to own businesses, but they're forced to because they need to to make a good living. Well, I just gave you the numbers. If you can, if you're a business owner and you can create an environment where an associate can serve a couple hundred people a week and change those numbers. If your average is 95 dollars a visit, they can serve, you know, 75 people a week. And, and it's a win-win situation. The business is profiting. We use the rule of thirds with businesses. If an associate generates 500,000, we like to say roughly a third of that should be profit to the owner. A third of that should be paid back in compensation to the associate. And the remaining third goes to cover the overhead, which does increase to some degree with an associate doctor. So that's a good formula there. Another formula while I'm at it, just dropping some gems on you guys. Our standard for clinics is $250,000 of revenue per employee. I'll say that again. A profitable clinic should be averaging $250,000 of revenue per employee. Now that is figuring a full-time employee, okay? And that's an average. So I know you might pay a CA a lot more than associate doc, but take full-time for your clinic. A lot of clinics, that's around 30 hours a week. And so sometimes you might have two part-time CAs or a part-time doc. That's great. Then count them as 0.5. So, you know, if a clinic's doing $750,000 a year and there's three people working there, um, that clinic's profitable, okay? But we get on the phone with people sometimes and yeah, we're doing 1.5 million and there's four of us. We know, wow, you're a little understaffed and you can definitely afford to bring somebody on. But we also talk to docs who go, yeah, we're making 400,000 right now and we have four staff members. I know they're averaging $100,000 per person. I know the owners got very little profit margin in their clinic and to bring on somebody else is going to strain that business too far. And so again, how do you change that? You either collect more per service or you take care of more people or you reduce your staff size so your overhead comes down. But those are important stats that I don't hear used a lot in chiropractic. And we know instantly we're on the phone with somebody by those numbers, how much profits in that clinic or not just by running, you know, average revenue per employee. And again, the target is $250,000 per full-time employee. All right. I liked this Sugar Ray Leonard, one of my favorite quotes. Um, I became great because of my road work. You know, you hear these interviews, you can find them all over YouTube with Sugar Ray Leonard and in what made him great was all the hours he put in in between fights so that this was one of his classic uh, fights against Tommy Hearns that went really long. And he tells a story about being in one of the later rounds and just having nothing left at all. But he was able to dig deep because he did the road work. And, you know, your businesses are that way, too. So when you're interviewing um, for a job, please, a lot of uh, a lot of associates are a little timid or maybe intimidated ask about the business but hey you have a right you know if you're gonna you're gonna pull alongside this business it's very fair to ask some simple numbers that a lot of chiropractors are uncomfortable asking but i'd ask what's the revenue of this office how's the marketing how many new patients what's your you know how long does somebody stay i mean you're looking for a place that can stay you know provide you a stable salary it's a fair question to ask and owners you know, this is being a lot more transparent. Some of you might be getting a little sphincteric right now going, man, that's private. I don't really like to share that with anybody. I'll tell you one of the secrets why we've been able to scale clinics is the day I started being transparent with my numbers in my clinic with my staff, all of my relationship with my associate doctors changed immediately for the better. Because here's what happens. Owners, you know, there's not as much money in these businesses as, as the rest of the team tends to think. 
and so we'd have you know I, I found out we'd have months that we'd be losing money i'd have to pull from a line of credit or put my own money into the clinic to make a payroll and and they might saw that i drove a nice car see the house i lived in and think oh man dr miner's loaded and i'm sitting here actually we've lost money that month and so what and then there's other months where we're profitable um and so I'm a big fan of just being transparent with the numbers. So our team knows what we're collecting. You know, there's no surprise a business should be profitable. There's no shame in that. You've taken the risk to open a business, the stress to run payrolls, line of credit. I mean, there's a fair exchange. You should have profit from that. And you can't be afraid of that. But you'll be amazed at the grace you get back from your team and the loyalty when people see the numbers. One of the best practice management tools I ever did was just open up my books. And all of a sudden, when we had bad months, the whole team knew it. And we'd rally around each other and figure out, all right, how do we get things moving? How do we get things going? Instead of them thinking that, you know, I was just, you know, sitting high on the hog. It kind of brought us all during challenging times. We were able to work through it together. And then obviously any good business owner has systems in place. So when things are well, your whole team benefits. You know, that's the great thing about chiropractic, right? When, when business is good, everybody wins. Our patients are healing and getting well, and our team should win as well, too. Sugar Ray Leonard also said he had a great corner, which comes back to your team. You can't do this on your own, friends. I mean, you know, I see the models, and some of you might do them where the remote, you know, um, you go to patients' homes so you don't have to have CAs, or you run the office by yourself. And, um, you know, for some of you, that is, a, that is a great model. But if you have any kind of vision for your community, for your business, you're going to need some other people to help you out. You just can't wear every hat on your own, especially as you start doing a good job and more people want you, you need help. So that's where it comes down to having a great corner. It makes all the difference in the world because now these people need to become a reflection of you. And again, A players are able to do that brilliantly. They'll multiply you. They'll add to you. You know, we know this, the great business owners out there hire people that are better than them all the time and they're not intimidated by that whereas we know less successful business owners they have to they have the egos and they got to be the main person they got to be the you know the smartest best person in the room and i'm telling you the best business is actually approach it opposite i love this analogy of a flamingo do you guys know what uh, color a flamingo is naturally it's white and so what makes a flamingo pink it's not their genetics it's their environment and it's the diet they eat a lot of krill and shrimp and that's what turns them pink and so A players are oftentimes formed by the environment. And so um, again, back to you as an owner, that's a responsibility you have is to create a great environment that will attract A players. Because they're not gonna, there's too many other successful clinics today that people wanna partner with. So what makes you different? You know, are your systems solid? Are your procedures solid? Is your reputation solid? Are there ethics in what you're doing? Are you taking great care of your people? Are you taking great care of your team? Environment's really a big deal when it comes to chiropractic practice and attracting an A team. So um, that's this next point is, have you visioneered your dream team? You know, I'm going to ask you a simple thing that too many chiropractors don't ever do is just sit down and write now, next, ultimate. Get an org chart. You can get them all over the internet and, um, and get it like a blank one and fill out every role on the team. I actually like to start with what's your dream team look like? You know, who do you have on there? Do you have an office manager? Do you have a CEO? Are you the CEO? Do you have are, how many docs? How many associates? How many CAs? What roles? Do you have a bookkeeper? Do you have a biller? Um, do you have a marketer? You know, what is your, your ultimate vision of your practice look like? And capture, you need to sit down. What's everything that happens in your business? The finances, the billing, payroll, answering the phones, the marketing. Um, who's doing, you know, exams, who's doing report of findings, who's doing follow-up, who's doing the clinical work, who's doing um, adjusting, caregiving, you know, whatever modalities you're offering. You have to think about everything involved in the business and do that from ultimate. What would my dream team look like? And once that's down, take that all the way back to today and fill out that org chart and look at how you know, you're like most small business owners, your name's probably a lot of places on that chart, right? You're the CEO, you're the doc, you know, you might be the marketer, you're the bookkeeper, you're the janitor, you know, how many places are you on your organizational chart? And a great way to think about this to visionary your dream 
is to then decide, all right, when I when I get to this level, what's the next job I'm going to bring somebody in to help with? And, and on my slide here says, what traits must they possess? Um, I want you to think about that. Same goes for your personal life, too. A lot of people just don't, you know, they wish. You just take a little bit of time to craft. What does your business look like in its best state? And what roles and what people do you need there? And you compare that to what's in place now, all of a sudden now you got a roadmap. All right, I'm here. I want to go there. What's the path? Who are the people I need? I will tell you this, friends, and this is important if you're looking for a, for a job for you to understand. A players oftentimes do the work of two or three C players. You know, an A player is somebody who comes into a job and looks at where can I add value? How can I help? You know, what, what can I jump in and do? What can I take over? You know what? I'm seeing something over in this area that's not being done well or isn't being utilized. I'm going to jump in and take care of that. That brings value to the business, which ultimately brings revenue to the business. And that's what A players do. C players, you know, what's my job? What time do I clock in? What time do I clock out? I'm here. I show up. And oftentimes there's a lack of buy-in and there's a disconnect. And so... You know, if you find you're in a job and that's happening to you right now, I'm going to challenge you. It might be time to find another job, too. You know, I mean, life's short. We spend most of it working. And we have this beautiful gift of chiropractic that I don't know about you guys, but everything good in my life has come from chiropractic, from my wife to my kids, the challenges, the blessings we've had. It all roots back our social circles. Chiropractic's been such a gift to me. Um you know, I, I have this responsibility uh, to give back. I know a lot of you feel the same way. It's a Picasso painting. And my point to that is simply this end vision needs to be your Picasso. You know, what's your dream clinic? I, I've been in clinics now. They're doing $10 million a year. Um, I've been in every corner of some of the most amazing subluxation, adjusting only clinics, pediatric clinics, sports clinics, neurology clinics, rehab clinics, personal injury clinics franchises, you know, there's so many different variables of how you can do this. And there's great examples in every corner of our profession of people doing this really well, who are living out their dreams and finding people who find value, who are willing to pay premium money for these services. We have such a cool gift. You know, medicine, it's it's interesting. I think COVID was great because you look at how many people didn't choose to get a COVID vaccine, right? I mean, it was a, like what, 30, 40%? All of my career, it was like a 92, 93% vaccination rate at pediatricians. Nobody talks about that. All of a sudden now, 30, 40% of people opted not to do this. To me, what that matters to chiropractic is it tells me there's an underlying trust issue that medicine has. I mean, how many of you have been in practice a while and you're the primary doc for a family? I mean, that was most of our practices. You know, their insurance changes so much. Primary care doctors change. You become the one constant in your life in their life, in your patient's life, when something's wrong or they call on you for advice. Um, it's such a neat opportunity with medicine right now. They did, in, there's just so many tools as we learn the science behind the adjustment. And then these neurology clinics, and there's just so much in the functional space happening right now that, that medicine has no clue about. You know, they still have their drugs, their surgeries, their radiation. You step outside of that model, they don't really know where to go. And chiropractors do. And man, we're stepping in and the world is looking for those, you know, those validated alternatives right now. And we see practice is absolutely booming. You know, some of you, I mean, I'm even going to, this sounds odd, but we have a lot of docs who hold on to this whole dream because they were an associate and just got kicked and beaten down and they opened their own practice and it just never provided what they envisioned. And it's a lot of stress. I'm going to, if that's you, there's some great opportunities out there to work with some amazing clinics there. You can make some great money and not have the stress of running a business. You know, there's, I'm not suggesting you close your clinic, but I am suggesting if you've been struggling, there's some great opportunities for chiropractors right now. There's some great paying jobs and some really rewarding work in every niche of our profession. I love that quote. Cheap is expensive. We all have those stories, right? I mean, it's just, and that probably pertains more to the people you hire more than ever. I can't tell you how many folks we see that, uh, you know, I mean, guys, look at what Carl's Jr. is paying 17, 18 bucks an hour now. So Starbucks, you know, if somebody, where are they going to work? Why are they going to come work for you? I'm talking about CAs. 
you know, what's the average salary? We're seeing to get really high quality CAs that test really well in our cognitive assessments that we use for staffing. Um, you're $23, $25 an hour around the country. Again, another reason to bump up your rates if that's a little outside of what you're doing, but that's the environment. If you want to attract A players, they're going to command a higher pay, but guess what? You'll give a higher service and you in turn can command, you can charge more for your services. So again, focus on the value of the good and not the service of the cost. This is something I've learned from the wealthy friends and mentors I've had is they really don't care about cost. It's what's the value of that. You know, it's almost like marketing to me, right? I mean, if marketing returns three times what you pay, does it matter what it costs? You know, the challenge is if you, the variable, if it doesn't, right? You know, if I pay $10,000 for a marketing campaign and I get 30,000 back every month, I don't care what it costs because there's value in exchange for the service. You know, the variables, if you don't get the value back, um, that's when people start questioning the value of it. But again, I find wealthy folks and A players focus on the value of the good or service, not the cost. Another just point I like to mention when we're talking is uh, patient testimonials are a big deal um, for two reasons. A, you know, when I was coming up 20 years ago, they used to say, you know, a happy patient will tell three people, an unhappy person will tell seven people. Well, guess what? Now an unhappy person tells Google and it sits around and haunts you for five years. <laughs> so um, happy customers are important. It's one of the reasons, actually, friends, I'm seeing businesses bifurcate. Because if you're not good now, you're going to get slaughtered on Google. Like you can't hide. You have to, it caused everybody to step up their game. And that's a good thing. But another reason, don't mix a review from a testimonial. And a testimonial is critically important because it makes your practice member, it makes your patient stop and consider what would their life was like before they came to you, especially if you do any kind of wellness or maintenance kind of care plans People tend to forget what their life was like before they came in. And we always ask people that if, even if they've written them before, hey, what was your life like before you found started chiropractic care? What's it been like since? And what are you grateful for? And it always brings them back to, oh, yeah, I forgot about how miserable, how many medications I was on, how much pain I was in before I found you guys. So testimonials a lot of times are really important for the patient. But here's another thing. We're talking about staffing today. Testimonials are critically important for the A players you want to attract in, and you should use them in your interview process. As a matter of fact, A players have a great way of sniffing out other A players. So we use all of our A players on our teams to conduct our interviews to help out. And if they vouch for somebody in like, because they don't have, they won't tolerate a C player. An A player just, you know, they want to see your business succeed. They want to be a part of a team that's thriving. They smell when somebody comes along who's not going to help fit the culture of it. And so um, those testimonials are really important on the patient side, but also your team is a testimonial to your future employees for the quality of the business that you're running. That is such a critical point. I hope you guys got that taken down. So let's talk about how to recognize an A player. They love accountability and KPIs. They crush it. So doc, do you even have KPIs? You know, that's three metrics that you measure every month that each role is responsible for. You know, that's the problem why a lot of people aren't happy in their jobs. They don't even know what's really expected of them. You know, you should know if you're doing a good job at your job because you know your KPIs and you know if you hit them or not. And you know if you're doing a good job or not. And A players love that kind of accountability. They also want an authentic boss. You know, I, I think the world's getting their eyes open to this, but nobody wants BS and somebody who seems like they're slick. Like you don't have to have it all together. Quite frankly, this is why I liked opening my books, as I said earlier, sharing my finances, because people, it's authentic. You know, when we're failing, the whole team knows it. There's not this facade that we're successful right now. But if they care, the whole team pulls together and helps you figure out a solution to get things moving. An A player wants the ability to impact the business directly. They want to contribute, man. They want to see you succeed. They want to see the business succeed. They're a part of it. They bought into your vision. They want to see how what I do helps, helps the lives of the people we serve, helps the business grow. They're fully involved with you if they're A player. If, they, if your team's never asking about these things, it's a good warning sign that you might not have some A players. Also, an A player wants the ability to make some changes and drive growth. You know, they get antsy if things aren't well. 
they're going to give you their input. And if you ignore their input a few times, they're going to start to disengage from you. This is a, a chiropractic posting I pulled from Albuquerque where some of our offices are. I mean, how would you want to work here? <laughs> it's just an uninspiring, I mean, I don't know. There's just, And that's what most of the job descriptions out there look like. If you have your core values defined, if you have your KPIs defined, if you have your mission and your vision defined, this job description suddenly looks very different when you're writing it from that place. And uh, sorry for the cuss word, but you can't do epic uh, stuff with basic people. You know, guys, business, what I have found, it's an algorithm. And um, the challenge is just most chiropractors haven't had this kind of business education. But there's an algorithm to business. It's very predictable. And I gave you one of my simple algorithms earlier, that, that revenue per employee, 250000 I can instantly see from that stat alone where, where an office, where a business is at and what changes they need to make before they do any growing or, or what they need to adjust to get that business profitable. And when you start to understand these different algorithms in business, success becomes very predictable and creating an environment that creates a great job for your team members becomes very predictable. Single most important thing is pick the right people and keep them. There's nothing more important than this. Jim Collins is famous for his good to great book. And uh, he has this analogy of first you got to get the right people on the bus, then you got to get them in the right seats. And um, sometimes that happens too, as owners, some of you might have great people on the bus, but they might be performing the wrong tasks that aren't tailored to their strengths. So in terms of, um, of interviewing, if, if, you're, if you're an associate doc or coming out as a student, there's a lot of gems I gave you through this conversation. You know, you, you know, don't hesitate to ask, what are the core values in this business? How do you apply those? Um, do you have any examples of, of A players on your team that, and why are they an A player? I mean, that owner is going to be looking at you with big eyes. Um, what about the financials of this practice? Can you share them with me? You know, how profitable were you last year? What are the collections? Are they trending upwards, downwards? Um, what investment are you making to help drive that forward in your systems, your processes, your procedures, your people, your marketing? Um, a business owner, one of two things is going to happen. If it's an A plus business owner, they're going to get really excited. You're in front of them and they're going to have answers for you. Um, if they're not, they're going to get really nervous and defensive that you're asking these questions. And so, again, being an A player means showing up and aligning yourself and contributing to the business, but you want to make sure that business is worthy of your time and energy and effort, or at least you're able to affect change to drive it that way. So when I talk about interview questions, it's really along the lines of what I was talking now, do your research, you know, at the very least, you have to read the Google reviews. One of the great things about chiropractors is there's a lot of other websites out there now that will, you know, Google reviews and, um, you know, another great interview question I like is, hey, doc, I noticed you have four negative Google reviews and they themed around this. What have you done to address that? <laughs> All of a sudden you're interviewing the owner, right? Instead of them interviewing you. Um, and any, a, you know, solid business loves those questions. Oh my gosh, this person's thinking on a whole other level. You know, um, the worst thing you can do in an interview is just sit there and say, I don't know. When they say, what questions do you have for me? Oh, I don't know. What hours are you open? I mean, you know, you kind of, people want to know what you care. So investigate the business, look at the website. Are there core values? Ask them about the core values if you find them on the website. If there aren't core values, ask them about what they are. Do they have them? Um, like I said, ask about the finances, look at the Google reviews. Are there any articles out there? Are there other, like, I forget, I'm blanking on the top of my head, but there's a lot of other rating, you know, anonymous people go, health grades, I think it's called. What's the ranking for the doctor in health grades? Is there any news on the business about the Better Business Bureau? Ask about that stuff when you're interviewing. You're going to show the owner that you did research and that you care, and that alone is going to distinguish you so much from the other candidates. And then something that's worth saying too, guys, is if you're a newer grad or in school, um, still the biggest reason that associates don't get hired are their hands. Adjusting skills matter. And we'll have it's it's the most common reason that an owner rejects. You know, what we do is owners hire us. You know, these successful clinics, they realize they're they're not experts in hiring, so they're happy to outsource it to us. Their time's well better spent on taking care of their patients. We're experts in hiring. So we do everything for people. 
the job ads, the interviews, the screening, the assessments. And when we find a person who's the right avatar, we send them into the owner for the interview. And um, it's just, it's, it's really critical that you guys understand that these owners and these businesses that are doing well have such a high value on the people they're attracting. But the number one reason they'll turn somebody away is because they can't adjust. I love them. They asked great questions. They were engaged with me. We seem to be on the same page. Man, when they touched me, it was like two limp fish. It was horrible. And so I'm just going to absolutely encourage you to go to every possible opportunity that comes along to improve your adjustment skills through school. It ma Docs, it matters to the point of you getting a $110,000 job or a $70,000 job. It's just, it's the, it's the unique nature of chiropractic. It's literally going to put tens of thousands of dollars in your pocket if you're a great adjuster. Um, this, I have no affiliation with this group other than he was a classmate of mine, but I love the guys doing Syntropy. Um, but there's other great adjusting techniques out there, but those Syntropy guys go, you know, there's seminars out there. It's worth investing whatever they charge for weekend seminar and doing a few of those. You're going to see a return on that investment with what you're able to command in a salary when you go interview if you have great hands. And so that has to be said. Um, and again, your vision, it has to be big. Our vision's always been 300 clinics and turning it public. And so everybody on my team knows that. So this is an image we have of a company going public. And uh, it's an inspiring image to me. And it's what we share. Your image is going to be something different, but you have to openly share that with your team. And then before we open it up, if there's any Q&A, a couple of gifts. Um, on the left one, the next program, this is something we created with my business partner, Dr. Stephen France. And, and this is cool. It's all there. It's the 10 tracks available as a chiropractor. And we have no vested interest in any of them. It's the ins and outs, the pros and cons, the good, bad, the ugly of every option that you could do, whether it's buying a practice, starting from scratch, leasing space in a clinic. There's four different kinds of associates. People don't realize that traditional associate, plan to purchase, plan to partner, franchises. We go through the in depth and we talk about the different behavioral models and the different levels of risk and expense in each of these. And um, if you're looking at changing jobs, you're looking at coming out, that's a program that's free to you that is gonna give you so much insight to help you direct what is the best option for me? Um, you know, what, what makes the most sense for me in my career as a chiropractor? Because we know if you pick the right, whether it's associate or owner or something in between, Getting that right really drives your satisfaction in chiropractic. And then on the other side is our DC interview guide. And uh, that's our interview process that we found works extremely well. We use it in all of our clinics. Um, you know, we've last year alone, we placed 250 associate doctors just in the US, although we do jobs around the world. Uh, but that's the interview guide. So if you're an owner and you're always wondering what to do in your interview, Please download that for free. Put it in use today. It's going to help you really weed out the A players from the C players. So um, great. Sammy, where do we go from here? Awesome. Uh, you can hear me, right? Just to make sure. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Miner, for taking the time out of your day and give us giving us the insight on what you talked about. Um, guys, if you wouldn't mind, if you have questions, please go up to the Q&A box. Um, so we can have Dr. Miner answer any of the questions. And while we are waiting for those to come in, Dr. Miner, I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, I know you talked a little bit about it, but I want to know a little bit more insight if you can. Um, sure. And dur during the interview process with the questions and everything for a new DC coming out, wanting to get into an associateship, what are some things that you recommend that we do what we don't say, you know, what are the big key things that we should be prepared for? Yeah, that's a great question. I think you have to have some clinical background and knowledge, but if you're a student, owners understand that, you know, so, but what they are looking for is are the basic skill sets there and adjusting skills, examination skills, you know, it depends on the clinic, what they're looking for, but, but, but you need to come in with that and be confident in your skill set, but understand, you know, just think about the bigger picture. You know, what's the business here? There's people that come, people that get served through however they're serving people and people pay in exchange for that value. So understand the model. How are they getting paid? Is it insurance? Is it personal injury? Is it cash? What services are they offering that people are paying for? 
where are they attracting these people in? What kind of service do they need to give to give really A plus experiences when people come in the office? So I like that. And then back to what I said earlier, knowing the values of the clinic, um, looking for Google reviews on the clinic and asking about that, asking where the clinic struggles are. You know, if you, if you could change one thing in your clinic that would make things smoother, what would it be today, Doc? It's a great question for an interviewee to ask the interviewer. Um, what does an A player look like in this position? Um, if you've had people in this position and they haven't worked out, why was that? You know, questions that show you're thinking bigger than just what's in it for me. Because that's the mistake most interviewers make is, you know, it's all about them. And, and, in, a, and in a good interview, that's fair to ask those questions. But you also got to ask what's in it for the owner and what are they looking for and how are you successful in that role? I also saw here, I think it's in the wrong place, but there's a question, Sammy, what types of professions translate well for chiropractic assistants? What kind of backgrounds? We've awesome. seen it come from everywhere. Um, it can be um, fast food. It can be service industry. Um, we've seen, you know, maybe there's one that I find translates nicely if you can poach them away or dental assistants um you know they're usually expensive these days they're usually making 25 30 35 an hour but you really want to get an a play over a player over get them somebody over who's been running a three to five million dollar dental clinic you'll be shocked that that person can do the job of three people um but you know we've started with high school students we've started with people who've retired and loved chiropractic um so again something we use as recruiters is we use a cognitive assessment. And what that does is it tells us if you've ever, if you're an owner and you've ever hired somebody and a week in or two weeks in, they know the whole job, like you showed them it and they get it. And then if you've ever hired somebody and you're four months in and you're like, we have been through the same thing 15 times and this is not sticking. You can measure that it's cognitive ability and you can actually measure how quickly somebody's going to jump in and learn what you're doing and again, most small business owners don't realize this technology is out there. So that gets used, right? We, we screen all of our CA applicants with cognitive ability. We don't do that for DCs because you've passed boards to be licensed. So we know your cognitive is, is there. But for both DC uh, associates and CAs, we also look at behavioral background. But I don't think the background matters. As an owner, you have to define, what I said earlier, what role are they going to be using, performing, and what skill sets would best complement that role? If somebody's in the front of the house, it's probably important that they're personable, outgoing, you know, that they like people. If they're back in the back room in front of a computer all day running billing or stats, you probably want the opposite. You want somebody, they can be more introverted and detailed, and they really love repetitive tasks. They, they're, they, they're comforted and motivated by predictability. So you have to understand what role and what person would fit best, but their background in chiropractic, it's great. We've we've seen them from every corner of other professions coming in. Awesome. Great. I have I, another question for you. Sure. Let's just say, you know, I want to expand my business, but I really want this particular chiropractor at this another office. How can I recruit them without ruffling any feathers and any non-competes? How do you, how would yeah. I go about that? Yeah, that's that's fair. And And this is a new one for owners because now that things are getting more competitive, there's a little bit of that, um, you know, and we're careful because we really, we're kind of interesting in that we have our client who pays us, the owner, right? But right. our other client that we're a partner with is the talent. And so we have to be careful of how we do that because we can step on some toes. Um, we're very transparent with it is what we do. And so again, a lot of times owners, the biggest factor still like it or not is salary. And if, if you're paying an associate or an associate's making 60,000, 70,000, 80,000, and there's a job over here at 115,000, um, I, I don't see too many DCs that are owners. If they, they get that, you know, wow, they're paying how much? So now the, the owner of the clinic has to make a decision. Wow, is this person valuable enough? Or am I, can I pay that or not? So a lot of times it's just, you know, being transparent and honest. Um, also, um, so how we recruit people, another big thing is today's world is benefits. And this, for a long time, we didn't have benefits. You know, we said our, the benefit was we'll take care of your whole family. Well, it's amazing how many um, associates and CAs will pass a higher paying job for really good benefits. So, you know, we, we see that regularly. There's a job over here that pays 100000 This one pays eighty-five, but I have three, four weeks off a year and I have full 
health insurance and I have a 401k and there's some equity ownership even possible after so many years, um, that job tends to win out over the job that's paying 100, 115 with no benefits. So, um, and then the non-compete question, um, non-competes, a lot of it comes down, you know, they don't hold up well in court. Um, and I'm no legal expert, but you can't keep somebody from making a living. And most of them, the owners, some of them we see are just outrageous. You know, you can't practice within a 30 mile radius. And um, so what we suggest our owners, we actually have a contract product that our owners uh, can buy. And what we recommend in there, I'm going to call it the wrong thing, but it's it's a non-solicitation. So what you can be very strong on is that the person leaving doesn't take any patients with them, market to that person. And there's actually a financial obligation if they do take any people with them. And most owners get that. That stinks if somebody leaves. But if they leave and even open up down the street from me, um, as long as they're not poaching what I had them in there, that's where it gets really dirty really quickly. And so we actually steer most of our today to, to really not do the non-compete, but have a non-solicitation because at the end we've seen multi, we've seen one person win a non-compete, but most of them get thrown out and are lost because you can't keep somebody from making a living. Um, you just can't avoid that. So those non-competes don't tend to hold up very well. Okay. I have another question for you. If a DC is unhappy with their current job and wants to find a new opportunity, any suggestions on what to do? Can Cairo Matchmakers help them? Yeah, I mean, our, our website, chiromatchmakers.com, we go to our job posting and you'll see all the jobs we have available. And if any of those are interesting and where you want to be, reach out to our recruiters. They can tell you all about the job and do an interview with you. And they'll have you fill out a couple of these assessments to see if you're a good candidate. Um, one thing we do, Sammy, is yes, we, just as a policy, because we've placed for so many doctors in the profession, if um, the, the clinic owner is a client of ours and their associate comes to us for a job, we will let the owner know. And we tell the associate beforehand, hey, it's our policy before we show you a job or talk to you about a job, your, your owner is a client of ours. We have a responsibility to tell them that you're coming to us. And so, you know, we don't throw anybody under the bus, but we want to be transparent with what we do and take care of both our talent who are looking for a job and the owners. Um, but we, we haven't run into any issues because I think we really try to, we realize that's a sensitive subject. So we just try to be transparent when that happens. But yeah, please, we have, um, again, A players tend to be in jobs already and want another job. So that, that's pretty common today. But we have a job board that has all of our jobs and we don't promote this anywhere in writing. But um, just so you know, we, won't, we will not take on a job that's under $80,000 in salary. Um, it, we just, you know, we want to see this bar raise in the profession. And a lot of times when an owner comes to us and they're not there, you know, most of our owners then will come back six months a year later. We'll say, you, look, doc, you got to get another 150,000, 100,000 of revenue. And then it's not coming out of your pocket to hire this associate. Cause where it goes wrong is an owner hires an associate, tries to pay him very little money, gives him a big bonus so that the owner doesn't have to take money out of their pocket because then the owner starts getting resentful because they really couldn't afford that $7,500,000 they're paying to the associate. So they expect the associate to come in and grow the practice. Well, you're starting this relationship on uneven expectations and agreements right off of the bat. And so when a practice is really um, stable, they can afford to give up what they need to in salary for the associate doctor and there's a fair exchange. And so if, a, if the metrics aren't there, if the algorithm's not there, if, if they're, they have four employees and they're making $500,000 a year, we'll tell them, look, doc, you got to get this practice up to $750,000. Then you'll be able to afford an associate and buy back your time freedom or serve more people. If you do it now, you're going to be resentful of that person. You're going to create a bad situation. So, Okay. All righty. And I'm assuming you're going to be at Cairo Texpo, correct? Of this year. That's the one in June, right? Yes, that is a cool yeah, one. Yeah, I believe I, I get the honor of speaking, and we'll have our team there. And um, um, yeah, we'll also be out at Parker's homecoming. So okay. um, we love so, Texas chiropractors. We're, we're here, and so we'll be at everything we can. Well, awesome. For those who are on the call, if you want to know more information, you can definitely reach out to TCA. We can definitely give you Dr. Miner's information, and you can go see him personally 
in person at our Cairo Expo 23. We want to see you there. Check your inbox for details because that will be coming soon. Dr. Miner, thank you again for taking your time with us. Thank you for being a TCA bronze partner and just being there for us. We truly appreciate it. All right, everybody. Thanks again for joining us today. Just a reminder about our next gen DC social event happening on April 4th in Irving and in Austin on April 20th. Go register on the TCI website today and learn more on social media. You guys have a great weekend. Good Friday. God bless. And we will see you soon. Bye.